before tomorrow or later today, I am going to see um, Martin Ware. Had a long meeting with him a couple weeks ago, and now going into his studio, his 3D studio. Um, he's talking about maybe assisting with Harmogram um, and maybe some other project with him. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow and um, going to take the CD in. Um, I don't know if I'll just leave him the whole thing or leave him the first two movements. So if uh, Martin or, and his umbrella organisation and whoever can take something of this on board and help, it will be good because the structure of releasing this is not going to be well, there isn't a normal structure really anymore. So tomorrow, I'm getting prepared for this. I've just burnt the CDs, and now I suppose I really should get myself to bed because it's quite late. So, 99. Okay, so this is Here Martin. <laughs> Here we are at Connected in Common Garden, one of our demo studios, very illustrious. We're about to demonstrate the three-dimensional sound system for Marvin. That's me. And uh, this is... Acer. Hello, I'm Hello. running the sound system. Okay, in this room we have two rings of six speakers. Six up in the ceiling here, and six at ground level. Um, and our software called 3D Audioscape enables us to create the impression that sounds are moving around the space in any direction, um, left, right, front, back, or up or down or you know, in any, any three-dimensional direction, fundamentally, at about 20 frames a second, um, up to 16 discrete locations in space. Um, and as a front end, we use Logic Pro, but you can use anything you wish, because it goes into a separate program for the spatialization, so it's just assigning outputs. Um, going into those 16 discrete locations can be as many tracks as you wish. So. Uh, we'll show you, shall we look, do you want to look? Who this? designed the software for that? The software was designed by, um, well it's a long evolutionary process, but the, this this form of the software was designed by Paul Gillier on Acoustic Design, right? Uh, who we've worked with for the last 10 years. Um, and basically it used to run on a, a kind of DSP enhanced PC, uh, which was very expensive called the Lake Huron. And now it's been, um, of course, the technology has improved and uh, processing power has improved. You can now run on a Mac laptop. Uh, right. In fact, we run the whole of the future of sound shows around the country off one laptop, don't we? It's pretty impressive stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a piece of standalone kit that you can bolt your own front end onto, right. or we provide it with Logic. That's our preferred um, platform. Um, so basically, the outputs from your sequencer, or our sequencer, or our digital audio workstation, uh, go directly into the um, the 3D Audioscape software, where you can visualise where the sounds are meant to be in three dimensions. Um, prior to starting to use it, you program into 3D Audioscape the location of the speakers relative to the idealised listening position in the middle. So um, in this instance, you'd say, I don't know, this speaker would be I don't know, two, I'm following meters, you. two meters to the right uh, on the on the x-axis, and it would be three meters that way on the y-axis from where we are, and from uh, the seated position, probably a meter above head height. So you do the same for all the speakers. You enter these coordinates. And then the software kind of generates a virtual space. Right. Once that's done, which takes a few minutes, um, you can then um, move things around live within the space um, using this 3D joystick, joystick, which is frankly not very expensive. They're about 50 quid, 40 quid or something. Get them from PC World or any good dealers. <laughs> um, and the key thing about it is. You don't need all these buttons and stuff, but um, it's a normal joystick, but it's got a height control on it. Which right, is there. height control, yeah. Height control. Yeah. Now, you can actually use different devices to to create to instead of a joystick, you could use, for instance, uh, although we've not used it yet, but it is technically feasible to use something like a Wii controller, 
uh, anything that can detect and implement, not detect, anything that can implement three-dimensional spatiality uh, that can interface with the system could be used right. in theory. So a Wii controller would be good, or you could use something like an air mass, for instance, that can detect height as well as spatial uh, characteristics. Anything that can issue X, Y, and Z coordinates. Right. Um, so when you do the live spatialization of your individual sound streams, um, uh, it records it in MIDI controller values, uh, three different MIDI controller values, one for each axis, X, Y, and Z. And uh, then, like every other, uh, like every other MIDI controller data, you can manipulate it however you wish. You can loop it, you can reverse it, you can invert it, you can randomize it, you can humanize it, you can do anything you wish. So it's just like any, uh, uh, any um, well, in logic, it just records it as a data stream, so you can see what you've recorded. And you can move it around, of course, you put it wherever you wish. Um, so it becomes a very um, easy and straightforward way to manipulate sound in three-dimensional mm -hmm. space, plus you get the added benefit if you could just show the, oh yes, here, you got the added benefit of um, you can see where the sound is meant to be emerging from in three-dimensional wow. space. Yeah. So all these different colored balls symbolize a different sound stream. So can we just solo one, in this example, can we just solo one particular thing and show how it moves around? Okay, so what are we listening to? Right, this is a piece that we originally wrote in 2001, I think it was, to convince Sony PlayStation to uh, to do an enormous three-dimensional sound installation for a live performance with Erasure and the lead uh, the concert master from the Royal Opera House, um, who was uh, you know virtuoso violinist, and we designed basically a uh, two and a half hour set of immersive three-dimensional composition, uh, half of which was based around their uh, creating new immersive ambient versions of of their famous hits okay and the others were brand, were brand new compositions in this kind of immersive electronic style uh, and for what was it this a was, specific this environment this was for a huge um, party actually uh, ah. for, for, for Sony PlayStation every year they have they go somewhere in the world and they yeah. ship in 800 of their creatives and we did a, we did basically <laughs> two and a half hour performance uh, in three dimensional sound 75 meters square by about 25 meters high uh, for about 3,000 people. Uh, and did, and it, uh, did it go off hitchless? Yeah, it was amazing. It was on a circular rotating stage as well, oh, which right. is quite cool because all of Erasure fans were trying to get to the front of the stage and the front of the stage kept moving. <laughs> uh, it made me laugh. <laughs> so also the immersive projections as well, which were linked to the sound. And The other key, key thing about our system is it's very easy to integrate with visual uh, you know, timelines and, uh, and and interactions because it, it's you know it talks it talks a very common language MIDI so I mean anything that you know, like DMX for instance there are free plugins on the internet that can convert DMX information uh, in space uh, into um, in, into uh, MIDI information which we can read yeah so uh, there's all sorts of um, we're used to working with lots of different technologies as well. It's not just a standalone technology which nobody can understand. It was originally built in Max MSP, so um, it runs on Max MSP Jitter. On, you know, I don't think you need to know that, but I just thought I'd mention it. Good um, for the engineers. Yeah, uh, good there. for the engineers out there.